Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. But taking a small break from Rhyme Goat, here is a solar a stasis build that was popular at one point and is now nowhere to be seen. Ultimancy Gloves and Conditional Finality are two exotics that work really well in PvE, simply because it allows you to get up close and personal and pretty fast and deal hefty damage just from Shatter Ignitions. And that's not all. A further spreading its effects to everything else, we can get increased damage from two elements in use, multiple turrets at once, rapid ability cooldown, easy elemental pickups, and quite a fun and interesting kit that's away from being meta. Today, I'll show you how to have some fun. So, starting with the general aim and the Zodic of the build, our aim is to show off the power of Solar and Stasis together and how effective the setup can be when done right. For this, we will be using Osiomancy Gloves and Conditional Finality. It's done with Zodic Armor, Osiomancy Gloves, with this Zodic effect, Fervid Cold Snap, it states, your Cold Snap grenades have an additional charge that recharges quicker on hits. The Seeker spawn from Cold Snap grenades travel further. Now, while using your Cold Snap grenades are our best option to pick here, we are solely using the exotic just so we can have two stasis turrets at a time. With how fast our grenade cooldown will be, thanks to Devour, we can easily saturate an area with turrets one after another with little effort required elsewhere. One thing to be certain, this is going to be handy when using it with faster command and conditional finality. Now, faster command will auto reload the weapon as you play, so DPS will increase. While conditional finality will actually have three rounds in this magazine instead of the standard two, so even better damage over time. All of this combined creates a sweet setup for all. Our second exotic is the conditional finality, with this exotic effect split decisions, which states a dual barrel split into stasis and solar damage. A simple dunstan stand weapon, this exotic will allow us to freeze and ignite targets from two shots provided. Now, while this works amazingly with our current kit, including Facet of Room with its bonuses, not everyone can get this since it only drops from a raid which not everyone can do. Not a problem, as the kit isn't limited to just this weapon. In fact, Duality and Lord of Wolves are a good match to go with, but don't offer the scorching effect that Conditional offers. What they do offer is their own unique effect they have with their exotic traits, and how you can use a stasis priming weapon with headstone and a heavy weapon with incandescent to fill in the gap. It's not perfect, but it doesn't limit you down on too much. For the aspects of fragments, we then have the following. A feed the Void, where defeating a target with an ability will grant you Devour. A Bleak Watcher, where converting your grenades will turn them into stasis turrets that will slow and freeze targets. A Fast Awakening, where rapidly defeating targets with light, dark, or super abilities will generate an elemental pickup matching that type. A Fast Protection, where being surrounded by enemies will grant you damage reduction. A Fast Command, where freezing or suppressing a target reloads your equipped weapon. A fast up balance, where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grants melee energy, rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade energy, and fast of room, which will increase the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a stasis crystal or frozen targets. Uh, the following is what I would consider the best option to pick if you want to fully synergize well with the kit overall. A faster command and room both make sense to use because of the heavy uses of turrets and the solar slash stasis effects this will play into once a build gets the momentum. As shown, this drastically improves our abilities to keep applying pressure without stopping, and thus get rewarded through a number of buffs. One of these buffs will be from elemental pickups created from Fast of Awakening, which in our case should create a fire sprite or stasis shard depending on what we do next. A balance is always nice to have on hand as it's always active in the background, and protection is a must since we are using a shotgun up close. Now, if you don't care about elemental pickups in any way or form, then applying the Facile Courage Fragment is a good alternative for the extra 10% damage we can apply. As we are using Solar Super and combining that with our turrets, it will at least make dealing with bosses or big enemies much more easier over time, and require less super energy over time as well in terms of dealing with them. I can also see Facile of Dawn being useful only for our shotgun in terms of closing the gap and hitting hard, but you may need to invest a bit more to strength cooldown as well just to go down this pathway if you decide to. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the build. The strength is also being supported, but only through a little amount. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for 30% damage reduction. We have no frost armor on hand this time, but we do have cursive dampener for the 15% AoE reduction. This, along with devour, should be fine for increased survival. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via cold snap grenades. 
With the usage of osteomancy gloves in hand, our main priority is to use our grenades for creating as many tools as possible. Depending on scenario, we may use cold snap grenades on themselves, but this will of course vary. Having this with Devourer as well will allow our build to use our turrets as much as often without the need of grenade based bonus perks to support us even more. Outside of that, this brings us to the additional mods which are recommended for buffing our key stats. Impact Induction times 2 for a 17% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer for a 12% midi buff, which is optional, Invigoration for a 10% midi buff, Outreach for a 12% mini regen buff, and distribution for a 4% all ability buff will cover the key areas for the build. A further additional mods we have the following Heavy Ammo Finder, Scout, Reserves, and Scavenger mods for a heavy weapon, Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power via matching elemental type, a charge up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1, a solo weapon surge times 1 for a 10% solo weapon buff, and powerful attraction where using your class ability will collect orbs of power within our venicity. Now, as we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build, what are recommended or optional, so please keep this in mind. A primary will be the Time 1 Wayfarer with 4th Time to Charm and Incandescent. A gotten from last season, this is 100% worth the investment. Not only are you getting a damage buff from landing precision shots, but defeating targets will then trigger Incandescent for that scorch effect over time. This combined with Stasis and Facet of Ruin is where the build will excel the most in, when I'm not using my secondary in action. I advise you to follow the same, as it is a good weapon to use for the build, except for the slow reload time of course. If you're not familiar with this weapon or just generally don't like it, then any weapon that has incandescent is also a good alternative, you're not limited here. Heavy, we then have the Typhon GL5 with Spike Grenade, Demolitionist and Chill Clip. It can be gotten as a World Drop or from Banshee. The following is amazing when you get the perk combo on hand. The damage it does will be useful to use against all sorts of enemies you face. Well, Chill Clip activation with Facet Command allows us to DPS dump a boss in rapid succession with little effort. The demo is going to be perfect for the increased grenade regen and also faster reload overall. So overall, a generally solid weapon to have. The use of combining two elements together to create a strong unique setup isn't new. Since you've watched any of my old videos, you will see completion of builds creating synergistic setups that are overlooked. With conditional finality being introduced to us the first time, it only fostered the idea of combining two or multiple elements into one to create something fascinating. This build is one example of this. Not only does Solar and Stasis work really well with the effects, but the momentum of providing non-stop buffs simply from freezing or igniting targets is nothing to look away from. It works wonders as this allows our build to play long distance or short distance, depending on the scenario we are in. And this overall has proven to be quite effective with taking down numerous enemies with unique control. Our shotgun with stasis turrets and faster command allows us to cover ground, freeze and ignite a target, and also get a free reload in the process, all from triggering stasis. Or how about being able to pull off the following, but also get a stasis shard or fire sprite from fast awakening just from our weapons. Or how about getting multiple turrets at once and using our scout rival with incandescent to trigger off a massive volatile reaction from the process. All of this is achievable, not just from your perspective, but also from the given gameplay, and it's pretty cool, I must say. So is this build worth it? Well, yes, since this season is focusing heavily on stasis, so now is the perfect time to use such a loadout when available. However, it's also worth experimenting with weapons you don't always see in endgame, such as shotguns. And while conditional is pretty powerful on its own, think about what else you can do with such a build in your pocket. You'll be surprised with how effective legendary and exotic shotguns can be in GMs, raids, you name it. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.